<laughs> yeah. So what's this? Any ideas? Well, this is head on, you see. If I turn it like that, I think you'll probably recognize it for what it is. A giant version of a safety pin. I picked this up many years ago. It's probably a stage prop, actually, but it's a wonderful size. And then you think, wow, let's get back to it. So I went and bought a box of this stuff and started to play with it. There we are. There's a whole box of things. There's about a growth. I think you buy them for the growths. Uh, and so uh, dry cleaners use them all the time, so it's easy to find. So I've got lots more to do with. The first thing I did when I fiddled around with it, and it was just my fiddling that caused me to do it, I took two of them, which is these two here, perhaps, and I found a way of joining them together so that they were joined by the bottom two loops, which is this here. There we are, that's it solved. It's tricky to do, I have to say, it's darn tricky. In fact, and every time you try to do it, you find your pricking your finger. So when I eventually went into production, I called it ouch. <laughs> That's what it is. Anyway, I showed it to a friend of mine who's been in puzzles all his life and said, this is something new I've invented. He stifled the yawn and said, yes, Tim, this has been about for about 20 years. Look, you can have one of these from the shop. It's the same idea. It's a loop like that, two of them, and they're curled around and you've got to take that over there like that and take it round there like that. Eventually, if you're lucky, it comes out. Sometimes, sometimes it doesn't come out. <laughs> Let's try it again. Ah, uh, that goes out like that. That goes like that. Ah, oh, there we are. It comes out. But to do it with some safety pins is, uh, yes, a little more dangerous, and you certainly get out. So anyway, I did make it, and I gave it out at a puzzle party in 1996, it was, so a long time ago. And then the following year, getting even cleverer, I thought, let's try another trick. I disassembled this and made the loop goes the other way. It's actually like what I call a clockwise loop. And if you have a clockwise and an anti-clockwise loop, you can't join them together. It's like having a nut with a, with a, with a left-hand thread and a bolt with a right-hand thread. They can't be joined together. So I then went into production and we called it out two, and the idea was to have two of them in the packet, one hidden inside and the other on the outside, and you have to match one with the other and cross over, and then you can solve it. And that was very satisfactory. I can't say I've made that many, but um, if you think of any other ideas I can do with these things, I'm thinking possibly of making a skipping rope from music or bracelets or, I don't know, something like that. And the last thing I thought of is what about the little and large thing? I did a, a video about five three years ago on the biggest things and the smallest things, like a giant tennis ball and a tiny one. Um, and I thought, well, at the time, my, my favourite one was this one here, which was the clothes, the clothes peg. That's the smallest clothes peg I've got, and this is the largest clothes peg I've got. How about 20 foot, it's probably 20 foot. How about one of these in a park, 20 foot high, just to celebrate humble things in lives like clothes pegs and uh, paper clips and safety pins. Nice idea that. So any, anyone up for lobbying to get something of that size, one of these in the park. Fun, what do you think? <laughs>